Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Reconstructing History Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Cass. I'm Bob. You may have noticed... And you may be able to tell by the weird pauses... The weird that delays. We're not in the same... Yeah, we're not in the same place today. No, we're not in the car, as we usually are. And we're not only not in the same place, we're on different continents. Yes. I'm in the Netherlands, where it is starting to snow. I'm in the USA, where the snow is melting. <laughs> so, yeah, there we are. Strangely. But we didn't want to hold up having a podcast for you guys, so here we are recording a podcast in Discord and hoping it's not too choppy for you to enjoy. I'm sure you'll forgive us for the, uh, te any technological issues which may develop, ladies and gentlemen. We're just happy that we can yeah. still get together Absolutely. and talk about stuff and maybe give you a few minutes of entertainment to your day. Yeah, we're doing the best we can right now. Like everyone, um, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're making we're making do. Today, something interesting happened this week that gave me something I wanted to talk about. Okay, let me explain. The um, this week was the very first time in history that a court case has been heard in the European Court of Justice in the Irish language. Now, Ireland has been part of the European community since 1973 and had the right to have court cases heard in its language. And indeed, Irish was named, I think they call it a majority language in 2007. So you know, they could have done this at any time in the past. It's not like a rule changed and suddenly they were able to do it. But someone finally brought a court case and a native Irish speaker um, over medicine for his dog. He said, it's just not right that I have to read the medicine instructions, these complicated instructions in English, which is not my native language. My native language is Irish and it should be translated into my native language, as so many things in Europe are. Right. Yeah, and then this is interesting, because you say to people Irish, and they go, oh yeah, it's English with an accent, which it is not. It is a completely separate language. It is, it is um, not in the Germanic language family. It's not a Romance language. It is a Celtic language. If you heard it spoken, it would sound more like Klingon than English. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that, that's entirely and accurate. If you've seen any of my comedy, I've done I did a bit I've done a number of bits on how much Irish sounds like Klingon and why. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, no, it caught my attention because it was a story about Irish, the Irish language, and I am an Irish language speaker. I'm not a native speaker. I learned Irish. Um, very, you know, didn't start learning Irish until I was in my 30s, but I, I do speak Irish and it's a, a topic I'm very passionate about because many people, many Irish people, many real Irish people, not like me, not Irish Americans, but real Irish people say, why do we spend the money getting things translated into Irish? Why do we educate people in Irish? Why do we make people take exams, make kids take exams in Irish? It, it's not a useful language. This court case has introduced the idea that, you know, instructions should be rendered in Irish, Irish being one of the majority languages in the European Union. And now they're going to have to find translators to translate prescribing information, to translate instructions. You know, if you've ever bought a product in Europe and you see there are like 10 different translations on the back of everything. It's in French and Spanish and Portuguese and German and all these different languages. Yeah, I mean, it, and, there, there um, are some things that are monolingual, like the instant coffee that I brought with me on my sojourn here to the States, uh, the Nescafe. <laughs> That's all in Dutch, but the... Yeah, uh, shampoo bottle. The shampoo bottle on the, the back of the shampoo bottle is like in 10 different languages saying lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it only makes sense, really. If you're, if you're Unilever and you're producing a product you're going to sell throughout the EU, 
than having because having different packaging, yeah. dedicated packaging for each place in each language, that's that's a humongous expense that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, even if oh, you're yeah. a and, and multinational the size of Unilever. Yeah, and and in my previous incarnation working for pharmaceutical companies, you know, pharmaceutical companies are never just pharmaceutical companies. They also do home care products like over the counter drugs and shampoo and stuff. And I worked for Johnson and Johnson and, and companies that were included in Johnson and Johnson's family of companies. And yeah, I mean, I've done, I've done label translations in Chinese and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and you have to, I mean, basically they would call me in because I was a freelancer. They would call me in and pay me to do a job to change all these labels into this other, I mean, the, the one Chinese job, I, I don't speak Chinese. I got hired because I speak Japanese and someone who is familiar with the characters is better than someone that the characters look like nonsense to because at least I would know if it was upside down. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah. Um, I mean, basically, you know, all I, it, it was like, they changed the name of the product and the name of the product made the same sounds in Chinese, but the characters they used for it were different. And um, because it meant something different, the characters meant something different and they were, they were changing that. And so, yeah, we had to relabel all these products uh, everything for the Chinese market, and that that's a lot. Yeah. And and and, and so for a company the size of J and J or Unilever, it makes so much sense to have. Oh well, this product is going to all these countries. Well, we'll just put stuff on it in all these languages, and now Irish is going to be one of those languages. That's cool. Yeah, and what it does is it puts paid to the idea that Irish is useless. Why speak Irish? You're only gonna be able to talk to some farmers. Yeah. Now you need good Irish speakers, you know, not just someone who had some classes in high school, but people who are fluent in the language, who can do translations for labeling and instructions and all these kind of stuff, you know, not not the Google Translate jobs, the the, the things that really matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, the things where perfect comprehension is necessary, like drug prescribing information. So, the single court case, this little itty bitty court case over some dog medicine, now means there's a market for people with Irish language skills. It's wonderful. It just flies in the face of all those people who said it was a waste to keep this language supported. Yeah. I mean, it was only a matter of time, and really, I should think, that this would be... Because it, the Irish language has been increasing in popularity and, uh, you know, the, the, the number of speakers has been steadily increasing for some years. Sometimes to hear it said well, it in, in been, spite it, of the uh, requirement to study it in school, but... Well, you see, that's the thing. It's increasing in popularity among non-Irish people. But in Ireland, like in Ireland, there was this big push to create this whole new department of the government that dealt with... Irish. I mean, there was always a Department of the Gale Talk, Department of the Irish language speaking areas, the native areas. But um, there was this big push to increase the influence of Irish in daily life. And then the financial collapse happened in 2008, 2010. And it, it stopped because there was no money for it. Right. And everybody started saying, well, why are we learning Irish in school? Maybe we should be learning Chinese. You know, maybe we should be learning something useful, yeah. something marketable. Right. It, that became the, the, the rallying cry. And now, you know, that's pushed back on its heels because, well, now Irish is useful because you can get a job using Irish. Yeah. And not just in Ireland. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's I think it's wonderful. I mean, it's it seems like such a minor thing. But now and and let me tell you. I mean, as a person who, you know, back in the day, back in the 80s, 
Japanese was, was the Chinese. Everybody wanted to do business with the Japanese. Everybody said, oh, let's go and learn Japanese so we could do business with the Japanese. And that's what they're saying now about Chinese. And let me tell you what the problem with that is. You don't get a job just because you speak the language. Right. Unless you're a translator, like I was talking about Irish, you know, if you and, and being a translator isn't the same as being a Japanese major. I was a Japanese major. I am not a translator. Right. But, you know, there's this assumption that, oh, well, I'm going to go to school and learn to speak Chinese and then I'll get a job, you know, being doing business with the Chinese. That doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. What ends up happening is they hire you as a low level employee, like a receptionist to make nice on the phone and you never get into an executive position. Right. So, you know, I, my undergraduate major was, was Japanese studies, but I didn't work for a Japanese company. I worked for a company that had Japanese affiliates that I spoke to in Japanese that works. But right. I worked for I, I worked for a Japanese bank once for a very short period of time, but because everywhere else that I'd ever inter every other Japanese company I, were, I interviewed with wanted me to be a secretary. You know, yeah, I that's not was, happening. Uh, I was a financial analyst. I'm not going to sit at a desk and answer the phone in a nice voice because you want a nice voice that's bilingual on your phone. So I mean, yeah, if if you want to if you want to argue that oh, all of our children should learn to speak Chinese so they can do business with Chinese. Well, then they're, they're going to be low-level employees yeah. in Chinese companies, not where they want to be. You know, there's, there's a ceiling. There's a really hard ceiling there. But Irish is your language. There are many minority languages in Europe. There are many small languages in Europe. There are many people in Europe who speak English as well as they speak their native language but they don't let their native language go because it is theirs. Yeah. I'm quite preachy about this. It, and, and, you know, I'm, you I'm not You preachy? An Irish Never. Yeah. I'm, I'm not an Irish citizen, you know. I'm, some may say I'm not entitled to an opinion on the subject. I may not be entitled to an opinion on the subject, but I have one. <laughs> you don't discard your native language because it's inconvenient. To suggest that your government should do it because, should discard it, should not focus on it because it's a difficult language, because it's a minority language, it's not a populist language, is moot. It is your language. Part of your cultural identity. Yeah. I mean, I live in a country where live the best non-native speakers of English in the world. The Dutch are the best non-native speakers of English in the world. Oh, holy cow, um, they are. <laughs> you, like say, you, you like to say, between the age of seven and 70, they speak English as, as well as any of us. <laughs> and you don't see them throwing over Dutch. No, no, they, they you know? speak, everyone speaks um, English really, really well, but they also speak Dutch really, really well. It's, it, yeah, it, it coming yeah. From the United States, like I do, where so few people even know a few phrases in another language, it stuns me rigid that pretty much everyone can get by in English. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. I've had people say to me, oh, I, I don't speak any English, and then proceed to speak English to me. Yeah. I mean, they may be, un you know, they may not lack it, confidence in their mastery of it, but they still have enough to get by. Yeah. And it's going to be 10 times better than mine ever. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, Dutch, how many people are there in the country? 17 million? No. Yeah. 17 million Dutch people. I I think. Think. Yeah. Or like Frisian. Frisian is a whole other language, supposedly. Frisian. It looks Frisk. like a dialect of Dutch to me, but like, I've been told it's a separate language. 17.28 17 million in 2019. Right. And like the Frisians speak Fries. They don't not speak it because it's small and inconvenient. Right. 
They speak it. They speak Dutch, and they speak English too. Yeah. Someone I know, a while ago, was on a rant about, well, English is the lingua franca. I don't have to learn any other languages to get along in in the world. And he said this in France, which <laughs> just made me want to throw him to the French. I mean, for fuck's sake, people. Let me hail a cab for you. You tell him yeah. that. You tell him that. Yeah. But, you know, the whole concept of a lingua, fr- lingua franca, the lingua franca was the language of the Franks, was French. No, it's a, the, the irony of someone saying, well, English is, the, English is the lingua franca, so I don't have to learn any other language. Look, okay, so you're talking about French using a Latin term. That's, yeah. that's some irony right there. Anyone who says, can say that with a straight face is a person who thinks irony means tastes vaguely like licking an anvil. <laughs> before English was the lingua franca, French was the lingua franca. And Precisely. before French, it was Latin, you know? And before Latin, it was Greek. It's just, you can't be so arrogant about your native language. Well, and, that and, and when, when, everyone... f- when French was the lingua franca, it was the lingua franca because the, um, the ruling houses of Europe spoke French because it was fashionable. But the business of their governments was conducted yeah. in, the na- in the national, for lack of a better term, language. You know, Russian, German, Italian, etc. And what the, the, the muckety-mucks may have spoken French because it was fashionable to do so, but and they may have even used French in diplomatic language but the day-to-day conduct of their society was done in whatever the local language was. And to, it's, 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 a, it's a completely misuse. It's a complete misuse and misunderstanding of what lingua franca actually was. Yeah. And that, that's, that, that's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a rant there. Well, no, no. I mean, this whole, this whole thing is my rant, isn't it? I mean, it, it just... Uh... Save me from the people who say, oh, well, they learn it as children, so it's easier. That is, number one, that's never rung true. Number two, that's been scientifically proven to be false. There have been studies done that have proven over and over again that mature brains, that is brains over the age of 25 years, learn languages faster than children do. I did not know that. Yeah, it's true. The reason it appears that children learn languages faster is because children don't give a damn. When kids are playing in the schoolyard and one of them doesn't speak the local language, they try. Right. And they screw up. And then they try again. And then they screw up again. And they keep trying. They don't let it stop them. They keep pushing. And... It's just, like, not a big deal to them. Right. It's not that their brains are so good at acquiring language. Because their brains aren't as good at acquiring language as adult brains are. But they are more fearless. They are more apt to keep trying over and over and over again. And most of the situations in which little kids learn language are situations in which they can't fall back on their native language. Right. For example, you know, a a school situation where your native language isn't being spoken. So you either have to speak the language everyone else is speaking or not speak at all. Right, right. And they're, they're not better at language. They're more adaptable. Right. So they just plain try harder. Yeah. And that's also why... No, I was going to say something that makes no sense. <laughs> it is getting really white out there. Like the, the sidewalks are, are still just wet, but the, the grass and the roofs of houses are getting white. I'm sure you'll take pictures and apply them to the YouTube version of this right now. Yes, yes, I'll have to do that. I'll have to do that. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, and I, I sent you a video earlier. I was out, and there was the cute little, you know, the cute little Japanese trucks that the the city delivery vehicles. They're like the size of uh, golf carts. Yeah, yeah. Cute little little truck that size on the bicycle path, spreading salt on the bicycle path. Because that's Just what's the important. Just the bicycle path, though. Yeah. Not 
there was n there were no trucks out salting the road. <laughs> the trucks out salting the bicycle path. Well, it, it is the Netherlands. You know, the people are too sane to go driving in sloppy weather. But bikes? Out of hell with it. I can hear the uh, the traffic outside. It doesn't seem to have slowed slowed down. But I mean, to be fair, it's the it's just wet on the sidewalk. Right. It's just wet, you know, everywhere but the grass right now. But the sun is going down. It's at four thirty. Yeah, it's going to be and freezing the sun is soon. Going down. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's definitely gonna freeze. But yeah, the 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 bicycle paths. <laughs> so I was just I was walking and all of a sudden I heard this noise and you know you, you're not used to hearing if you hear noise on the bicycle path it's usually just a scooter but this was a bigger noise and I was like what the hell oh it's a salt truck on the <laughs> bicycle path. At least they're keeping weird. up with it. Yeah anyway um, back to languages and, and monolingualism and stuff like this. I mean I speak I'm a polyglot I speak five languages and I didn't learn any of them as a child. I started my second language when I was 13 years old. So I was in high school. And, um, you know, I often say I grew up hearing Italian and I did, but, you know, my, my grandfather spoke Italian and he lived with us until he died when I was 10 years old, but he didn't speak Italian to my mother or to, you know, anyone in the household. Right. I, I, I heard more Italian in town from other people's families, you know, who had grandparents who did yeah. only speak Italian. Yeah, there's a, well, there's a difference um, between being I, exposed to it and actually speaking it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was exposed to it as a child. <coughs> Italian sounds really familiar to me. I don't really understand Italian. You know, like, I... It feels familiar, but I'm I'm lost. You know? Yeah. But but no one, you know, no one in my family. I didn't have to. I didn't have to speak Italian to anyone in my family. Right. And I grew up around it, so it's there's a familiarity, which I didn't enjoy with Dutch or Irish or Japanese because you know I, I hadn't heard it before I started learning it. Right. Especially Dutch. I I very I don't think I heard Dutch ever before I started studying it. Yeah, I, I heard it a few it, times, but certainly never to any, with any frequency, that's for sure. When we lived in the St. Croix, I had a yeah, friend it takes who a spoke, while. a couple of, well, one friend who spoke Dutch, because he lived there, he lived in the Netherlands when he was un, an undergraduate, or in graduate school for engineering, so, and he remembered mm -hmm. enough of it that he could still um, speak it with some level of confidence and there was another acquaintance I had who spoke Afrikaans because he was from Cape Town I think and they would sit they right. would sit at the f at right. Fort Christian Brew Pub and talk <laughs> and, and practice with each other and it was actually a lot of fun and the, the language is a nice language it's a I, I, I enjoy learning Dutch which is one of my immense regrets here i have to get yeah, back on I, the internet and keep taking my lessons yeah can you um can you listen to npo radio aim from there i think so but i have not tried yeah you might give I will that have a try to, i mean know, by the time i'll get back on radio aim you know get back on my duolingo or whatever yeah duolingo you know it's, it's duolingo it is what it is it is what it yeah. is it it's it's but, a nice game. It's a nice language-based game. Yeah, and it, it does, yeah, well, it does I mean, put things in your head. It's not, you know, useless. It's just not as useful as something like italki or e-talki, however you want to say it. Yeah. And I mean, e-talki is only useful because you're connecting with teachers. Yeah. And if the teachers are good, I've had less than useful teachers on e-talki as well, you know. Yeah. And um, there, so there's swings and roundabouts because, you know, the... Duolingo isn't as good, but A, it's free, and B, it's machine learning, where... Yeah, and and one of the things that kind of annoys me with people, and you know, this whole idea, oh, well, you're good with languages, and I don't know if I'm good with languages or if I'm just stubborn. Why not both? Um, yeah. Both is good. <laughs> well, I, I think that <laughs> learning, well, learning another language is a force of will. It's... It's not something that really happens. Well, it could. It could happen 
just automatically, but not to a native English speaker, I don't think, because English is so pervasive. English is so much everywhere in the world that you would have to cut off all access to English yeah, and that's... for you to be able to. Yeah. I mean, if you're in a remote village somewhere where no one speaks English and you have no internet, that could happen. But What's like, like know, I commonly I, I say lived... about the, the Netherlands is that it, it, learning Dutch by just existing in the community is next to impossible because everyone speaks English. And the instant they hear you try to start to struggle, they switch. Now, that is not a condemnation yeah. of the Netherlands. It's absolutely wonderful. But it, at the same time, it is a fact that it makes it damn difficult to actually learn Dutch because you can't really immerse yourself in the language. Yeah, and that was the problem that I had with Irish as well, is, you know, you go to a Gale talk, you go to an Irish-speaking area, and you go to school there, and, you know, your fellow classmates speak English because you get exhausted trying to speak Irish all day. And then when your landlady asks you a question in Irish and you don't answer her, she switches to English. Yeah. Because it's, she knows it's easier for you, so she yeah. tries to help. Yeah, she tries to help yeah. and she wants to be, uh -huh. she doesn't want to seem rude. And, yeah. 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 And by contrast, when I lived in Japan, my homestay mother, my family didn't speak English at all, not a word. And uh, my homestay mother would try to look up English words to help me. But ultimately, you know, it's just she's using an English noun, badly pronounced, <laughs> in the middle of Japanese sentence structure, you know? So ultimately, she's speaking Japanese to me with an English word stuck in there. Right. Which, I mean, I told you the story about taco, you know, she gave me these little little muffins to eat. Yeah. And I said, oh, this is good, what is it? And she said, oh, it's taco. And I was like, taco, what's taco? And she said, you know, taco. And she made this movement with her arms. And I was like, okay, I don't understand what that's supposed to be. Like a week later, we were in the grocery store and she said, oh, look, cast taco. And there was, you know, octopus laying there <laughs> and I'm like oh I ate octopus okay and it was delicious um, but but yeah so that's that's how how you learn things in immersion because you don't have a choice yeah but being a native English speaker so many people speak English better than Americans and English people speak anything else yeah that it's always easier to go to English so learning a foreign language is a a choice you have to decide yeah and then it's just brute force it's just i think at the same time hit. i think you're right but i think you're not leaving enough room for native talent because yes it's it's true that you can brute force the learning of a thing but there there is space i think for talent in that some people find it easier than others oh yeah like i could i could sit, i'm not saying i could sit and practice and practice and practice and practice at the piano but at the end of the day my muscles work differently i'm a, I'm a percussionist and i it, using my fingers in independently is not is not an inborn thing to me it's not it's it's really damn difficult so i'm never going to be i could never be a concert pianist no matter how much i practice in other words, or, or even gain fluency yeah, and, at that and, instrument. That's not I, a I very mean, good metaphor. It's, certainly some people, are, are, some people are better at things than others. Like you, for example, you are excellent with making the correct sounds. Yeah. You know, if, if, you, if there is a sound that needs to be made, you can make it perfectly. You're, you're a mimic. Yeah. And you do that really well. Yeah. It's, I, I have and convinced that, people I actually them. speak languages using one of the three phrases I have memorized in that language, just because I drill the pronunciation yeah. until it sounds right. But I have a damn difficult time yeah. keeping things like grammar rules and sentence structure in my head without, as you say, putting my head down and mm -hmm. bullying at it. And, you know, yeah, constant and, and practice. Yeah, and I really think that even, even if you have even if you have a talent 
in one of the areas that makes that that is useful for language learning i still think you have to brute force it i mean oh, yeah. i i consider myself to be someone who has a way with languages but i have to make myself speak and you know it's not hard for me to want to talk no no usually you need a tranquilizer gun oh. to get you to stop <laughs> And I only say that because I'm separated from you by an ocean. Right. (laughs) If we were in the car like like we usually are when we record these, I would never have even thought that. Because you would sense it. You better watch out because my frozen shoulders get better and I can throw a hell of a left hook now. (laughs) But but yeah, it's 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 true that um, it's not true that so I mean people there are people who find different aspects of language learning easier than others, but the reality is it's it's really something you j- there's there's you just have to force yourself to do it until it becomes easy, and I think that there you know Duolingo and there are other language learning apps and language learning services out there, and I think that everyone's searching for a miracle, and the reality is the thing that works is surround yourself with the language, and force yourself to use that language, whether it's, you know, putting post-it notes on things around the room so you know what they're called in that language, um, listening to radio in that language, listening to podcasts in that language, reading in that language, listening to music in that language. My Dutch teacher is a big believer in music because she wanted to learn Spanish and she listened to Spanish language radio. Yeah. To get, you know, the sound of it into her head. And now she's fluent in Spanish, married to a Spaniard, living in Peru, you know? <laughs> well, it's it's um, like anything else, isn't it? The it, There is no magic bullet. Even if you have a talent at... No. So even if you have a talent at playing the piano, you still have to practice. If you have a talent, if you have a knack for mm-hmm. learning languages, you still have to practice. There's no magic pill, just like there's no magic pill for dieting. It's just not going to happen. You, the, the, anyone who tells you he can melt the pounds off overnight is a liar. You still have to put work in. And I think yeah, the same thing true. holds true with languages. Some people it's just true. have to work harder than others. And I don't know if that's true. I don't know if some people have to work harder than others. I think I want to dispel this myth that people who are quote unquote good at languages don't have to work so hard. I, I'm good at languages. That Everybody's always said I'm good at languages. And I'm working damn hard yeah, I, trying to become Dutch. Yeah, I think I think you work hard in different ways, like the metaphor that you like I, I, I think I pronounce Dutch really well. <clears throat> I don't think I speak it very well because the for me the things like the grammar rules and uh, stuff like that are difficult. Where for someone else they may pick up the grammar rules and all the technicalities of the language really easily, but their pronunciation is something they have to practice. Like they have to sit and drill how to do that soft G. <laughs> so yeah, but let's 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 tell the truth here. I'm going to I'm going to out you. You don't practice. Yeah, that is true. If I practiced, I would pick it up much mm-hmm. much more quickly. I would I would be very interested to know how far you and I would both get with our Dutch if we practiced the same amount because there was a, at least a six month period there where I was having a less an hour long conversation with my Dutch teacher every weeknight. Yeah. And and it's hard, you know. Some days you don't want to talk at all. Yeah. Well, you progressed and, leaps and bounds um, in that period of time. Well, your, yeah. Your skill went through the roof. And that's that's what you have to do. And I think that, you know, you say, oh, my, your, your Dutch isn't, isn't very good, but you haven't done that, you know? And I think that's, that's what I mean about brute force. You have to do... Now, you know, live in the Netherlands for 10 years and you'll get there yeah. just from going to the store, you know, and, and talking to the neighbors. But... But if you want to get there faster, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you're you're not as good at languages as me. I think you don't dedicate your time to it like I do, and I know you think that I'm. You know, I'm a grammar rules lawyer. I really am a grammar rules lawyer. But I don't sit there with the grammar book and study it. That's, I know that's the what rules I'm, thank because. Thank you for proving it, my point. I mean, you. <laughs> 
Why? You you pick. That's that's what you're good at. That is that is your talent. You pick that stuff up and you cat you codify it and you you internalize it and then you can use it. Where the, yeah, thi- but the thing I have to slave over and the thing that drives me nuts because I'm not very good at it and it's the reason why I don't really practice is because it, it's embarrassing that I'm not good at it. And there you are. But I think I think you think I'm good at it and I think I spent a hundred hours using those rules until they became nature. Well yes, you did, but you you, you knew a bunch of those rules before you started to put them into practice because the conversation you I was don't, don't forget I was listening to your conversation your conversation hours <laughs> and yeah she would give you a new rule and you would immediately internalize it and you know if there's something I I have to work really hard at that where if you tell me how to pronounce yeah, a I, word I I'll pronounce I, I the word the right think... way from there from then on till doomsday because that's easy for me to internalize I, I think you th- I, I think you think I internalize it very easily, and I think I internalize it because we do example after example after example after example after example until I'm sick to death. Right, and don't don't forget when I was you know doing, so when I, when I was briefly flirted with doing lessons with her, she and I did the same thing with the example after example after example after example, mm-hmm. and it just didn't stick. Ah. But she but she would tell me how to pronounce something and. You know, I'd, I'd say it twice and be done, and okay, there it is. It's, it's forever lodged in my pronunciation circuitry now. I'm just saying that it, we're, we're each good yeah. at different things, and nobody is wrong for, being, for having a different thing they're good at, even within something, if something is like language. You mean, oh, like, I- I'm agreeing with you that everybody can learn a language. It's just recognizing what you're good at and trying not to get totally frustrated with yourself over the parts of it you're not good at. And the fact that I still can't say the word for 30 properly. <laughs> yeah, well. I just avoid it. I say 29. <laughs> <laughs> one score in 10. One, t- <laughs> one score in 10, yeah. So um, what, are some, what are some ways that our listeners, let's try to identify some ways our listeners can... Um, strive to not to be monolingual? Well, something that's happened in recent years that's really cool is that Netflix and Amazon Prime both show a lot more foreign films with English subtitles now. Oh, okay. After the, the, rise, the rise in popularity of the Scandi Noir um, suddenly there's you know films in Swedish and Danish and Norwegian and and Icelandic and, and also, you know, French and Italian and Russian, and, you know. And let's face Spanish, it, Scandi Noir awesome. is just awesome. Yeah, Scandi Noir is awesome. So there are, you know, there are Hindi movies on, on Amazon Prime, movies in Hindi on Amazon Prime and movies in Chinese and movies in, in Russian. And, you know, I've had language teachers say, um, oh, it doesn't count if you watch a film in, in your target language and it's subtitled in English. And then there was this study that happened a couple years ago that said watching TV programs and movies in a language you're trying to acquire, even if you're reading them, reading subtitles in your native language, you are still making progress in that language because your eyes take in information differently than your ears take in information. So as your eyes are reading your native language in the subtitles, you're hearing the foreign language, the language that you're trying to acquire, and also seeing pictures that go along with those words. Right. And it's not as good as you trying to struggle through watching a foreign film. Right. But it is exposure to the language and still making a relationship with meaning. Because if, if you watch a movie in Russian and you don't understand any Russian and there are no subtitles, you're just going to guess at things and you're not really going to acquire language because you'll, you'll watch the pictures and you won't even listen to the sounds. Right. Um, but if you do that while reading your language, you start picking things up. 
so yeah, they did a study and found out that that this this does assist in language learning. Okay. And um, which I thought was terrific because I watch a lot of foreign films. All right, so and, that that's uh, one. Also, What's another? I don't know. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I'll cut this bit out. <laughs> music, music. Listen to music in the language that you're that you want to learn. There are grammar patterns. You were talking about how good I am with grammar. There are grammar patterns that the only reason I know them is because they're from a refrain in a song that I once heard. Oh, okay. Or, the you know, says them right. messing things up. Langsam kreleda, langsam kreleda. <laughs> That's an inside you joke. Tell the story? But... No, because it's boring. Tell the story. No, nah, it's boring. It's. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about language. Um, there is a happy birthday type song in the Netherlands. When you're singing it to a woman, you say, Lang zal ze leve. You know, long shall she live. But when people sing it, they sing it. Live, yeah, yeah they, they sing it really fast, and it it, it can the, the words get run together. And uh, what one of the various, you know, if you like green enchiladas type, um, I forget what the term is for that. The term of art where you substitute words that aren't the real words. One of the one of the things you can say is langsam yeah, geleide, and, and, and I don't remember what geleide means, but langsam means slow. Uh, no, langsam geleide is I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, th there you oh, go. Oh, langsam geleide. Long, long time no see. Geleide. It's been a while. Yeah. Okay. Long and time no see. So why would you, why would you sing that for someone's birthday? But still, yeah, I don't know why we I got on no that idea. story. I oh, thought, music. I thought that's what they were singing, so I was singing langsam geleide, until my friend's daughter said, "That's not how it goes." <laughs> And then, and then the record it, needle, went, oh. then the, the, the needle scratched all the way across the record, and we had to, yeah, yeah have a discussion about how, how to tell, how to sing a happy birthday song to someone in the Netherlands. So that's not how it goes. But music, like, oh. music is music is yeah. music works. Okay, so, music music is terrific. Music is really great because it sticks in your brain like nothing else. We've got um, so we've got uh, movies and TV shows using subtitles. We've got. Music. Mm -hmm. We already talked about listening to things like the national news broadcasts, which are almost always streamed on the internet yeah. from the country of in, in question. That's yeah, three and that, ways. that could be that could be a little difficult because the news can be quite technical. Yeah, but um, it's, it, it's more about it's the background, it's the background noise that puts the music of the language into your ears. Makes it sound, yeah. makes it sound um, normal. One, one thing that I've heard is really good, and I haven't done myself, is children's programs. Oh, yeah. Um, I know you've, you've watched uh, South Park in Dutch, I think. Yeah, I have. And I believe uh, SpongeBob SquarePants was broadcast in Irish. Yeah, I think it was on uh, well, Teje Kaher, wasn't it? And TJ Kaher, yeah, they had SpongeBob SquarePants and a couple of other things too, but I remember SpongeBob in, in particular. So the children's children's TV programs in your target language, you know, particularly if they're a TV program with which you're familiar, right? That's been dubbed in in your target language. Um, you know, kids' vocabulary is is simpler, sense and structure is simpler. If you're already familiar with the characters. From yeah. SpongeBob or South Park, you that's, know, you, that, you that's kind of know. Gonna, what's that's where I'm going to kind of only I'm going to gently and only about halfway disagree with you about uh, Duolingo. Is that it? I found it really useful to do that. James has a ball, a big red, a big ball, a big red ball. It's good. I, that's all. That's about as far as I've gotten with Duolingo, and it's really good for that because it drills you. Right, so we've got listen to your na listen to the national news broadcasts, which is eh. We've got watching mm -hmm. TV and films in that language with the subtitles on on you know Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon yep. Prime, etc. We have watch cartoons, children's programming with the in the language of choice with subtitles yeah. on, and I'm giving a qualified approval to Duolingo to get the very basics, you know, a few verbs, 
a few nouns, your basic, you know, Dick and Jane level language. Because in my experience, it's really good for that. I haven't gone farther with Duolingo than that because that's when I started doing eTalki. And then there's things like eTalki. Yeah, and, 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 and don't get me wrong. I don't think that um, Duolingo is useless. Right. Um, I think that Duolingo has a great model because it makes everything appear to be a game. Yeah. And that's always great. The problem with Duolingo is it only takes you so far. Right. And it goes a little off the rails, can... too, because it's machine learning. Because you'll, it'll do things like, you know, Dick has a little green sandwich. Because <laughs> it, it just shuffles vocabulary yeah. in and out. And that kind of, that's kind of, eh. I think for me to wrap up. I th- yeah, what... it's. I'm, I'm... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm just saying for, for me to wrap up, what seems evident to me is like in every other endeavor, if you want to be serious about mastering a thing, an activity, you're going to end up throwing money at it. Because, you know, if, if you want to do, if you want to remotely learn a language, you're going to end up doing stuff with italki, which costs some money because, you know, you're paying a teacher to sit down with you one-on-one and give you custom-tailored um, language learning. And that, that runs to some money. But it's the same thing like if you're trying to yeah, learn how to play a musical you. instrument. You, you're going to get to a point where you need that musical... You have to buy that musical instrument in order to practice it. And that runs to money. You know. It, anyway, you were going to say, so go on. Let me just interject something about, about Itaki. Um, and that's I-T-A-L-K-I dot com. It's a terrific website that basically just makes matches between language learners and language teachers. Now, eTalki has uh, uh, different levels. You know, I like to use professional language teachers, people who are certified language teachers, because I'm serious about language learning and I want someone who has an academic background because that's how I roll. But there are also people on eTalki who are community teachers, who are basically tutors who can help you. And, you know, if you're paying, for example, $25 an hour for a professional teacher, the tutor might only be five. And some tutors are only $1 because they're brand new and they don't have enough hours to be able to uh, command a bigger price than that. So you can get language help very, very cheaply. Just recognize that you're not going to get a professional level of teaching from a tutor who charges you the least amount because the reason they charge you the least amount is because they're not a professional teacher. And then you can also do something completely free on eTalki, which is called a language exchange. This is where you book an hour with someone that you meet on eTalki. You kind of set up, sign up for lists of people who want to learn your language and, and who speak the language you want to learn. Um, so for example, say that there is a person who speaks Farsi and you want to learn Farsi and that person wants to practice their English. Well, you book an hour with them and half the hour you speak English to them and they practice their English. And then the other half of the hour you speak Farsi with them and you practice your Farsi. Now this assumes that you have some of the language already that you can use. But one of the great things about being an English speaker is there are lots and lots of people out there who want to practice their English. So you could practice the most obscure language just because a speaker of that language wants to practice their English. And that's completely free because you're, you're doing a, a trade, basically. Yeah, okay. That's cool. So, yeah. The more, li- the more money you throw out it, the faster it'll happen and the more solid your progress will be. But you can certainly do it for free. Yeah. I encourage all of you. I encourage everyone who's listening. Give, give it a try. I mean, it's... It's really good for your brain, too. I mean, none of us are... None of, I mean, none of us are getting any younger. And keeping those neural pathways plastic is a very it, wise it, thing to do. It radically increases brain plasticity. Um, so do your it, sudoku, it, it, do your ballroom dancing, yeah, learn another like, language, 
ballroom dancing. Hey, do ballroom dancing. Oh, there's one. There's one. I just, I know we want to wrap this up, but I want to mention this. If you find videos on YouTube of dancing or aerobics or yoga in your target language, that's really good for language learning. Oh God. Because yeah. it's something, because it's something physical and someone is doing it and they they say, touch your toes. And then they touch their toes. You learn those words because they're doing the action. They're I picked up kind more Dutch says, right. going to yoga class <laughs> in the <laughs> Netherlands than I did in months of online learning. Yeah. At least I figured out what different body parts were and how and the word for relax. Adam <laughs> out. Uh, Spanish schouders. Spanish schouders. So that I mean, I came up with this idea once when I was watching some videos on how to samba and they were in um, Brazilian Portuguese uh -huh. and I don't speak Brazilian Portuguese at all but by the end of watching this group of videos I could count to ten or I could count to eight yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and and you know I knew I knew a couple of different words for you know your left and your right and yeah um, nice um but it's fun and it's one of those things that it talks to your body so you you can like bypass your brain yeah it's uh it's laid back cool I mean, give it a shot. Everyone, everyone who's listening, give it a shot with a uh, foreign language this week. Just pick one, go on YouTube and find something. Oh yeah, there's, there's YouTube videos, just, forgot all about those. Yeah, just just have a taste. Have a taste of yoga in Japanese or, or you know. <laughs> salsa, or even if it's just like five useful Japan. phrases in a language you've always wanted to learn. There's YouTube videos out there, I know for Dutch, that do that. So tons, yeah, tons, tons. all over and YouTube. I'm not, I'm not a whiny <laughs> okay, I you take care of whiny. you take care of His Majesty, and uh, we will see. We'll say goodbye to all the nice people listening. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't oh, forget yes, to do the whole like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that noise. Yes, please. We will be here for you next time, and until then, do something fun, remain awesome. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.